Yeah, so like right here? Is right here good? Good morning. 
I hope everybody can hear me this morning. I understand last week some people couldn't hear me. I hate this thing. Okay, first of all, I have weird shaped ears, and this doesn't like to stay on, so it might drift. What? No, they're not Klingon. There's, I don't know what they are. <laughs> but if you can't hear me, please raise your hand and tell me I can't hear you, and then we will do something with the sound. But good morning. Happy Father's Day. I'm filling in for Pastor Christine again, uh, and she'll be back next week for our final Sunday here. And I hope you'll be able to join us after the service for a potluck lunch and the opportunity to say goodbye, to thank her for her service here, and to wish her well as she takes the next steps in the direction that God may lead her next. Jesus promised his disciples that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in our midst. He's here with us today. So let us acknowledge his presence by the lighting of the candle. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome, you who are called disciples of Christ. Is anything too wonderful for our God? Wonderful for our God saves us and calls us. We remember the goodness of God who promised Abraham a multitude of descendants and then showed up at Abraham's door to announce that the promise would be fulfilled. We remember the compassion of Jesus who noticed the distress of his neighbors and acted to bring them healing and wholeness. We remember the invitation the Spirit extends to us to join in God's work of compassionate community building. It empowers us to transform strangers into community through acts of love. As we worship, may we receive the promise, the compassion, and the invitation to be disciples of Christ who joined in God's work of making disciples for the transformation of our households, our community, and our world. Because nothing is too wonderful for our God. Amen. Father's eyes. <laughs> 
Just like my father's eyes. On that day when we will pay for all the deeds we have done, good and bad, they'll all be had to see by everyone. But when you're called to stand, Tell just what you saw in me More than anything I know I want your words to be She had her father's eyes Her father's eyes Eyes that saw the good in things when good was not around Eyes that found the source of help When help would not be found Eyes full of compassion Seeing every pain Knowing what you're going through And feeling it the same just like my father's eyes, my father's eyes, my father's eyes, just like my father's eyes, my father's eyes, my father's eyes. Just like my father's eyes. Amen. Children here today? Children Our children need to stay today. Because Stephen wants to hear what... <laughs> Lily and Riley have to say, right? Yeah? Yeah, our, I'm so excited today that we're going to have several people uh, from our, and our very youngest, including our very youngest m members or, that come, uh, because they just got back from spending a week in Ventura, California, doing some work. And so one of our speakers is going to be Lily back there. And I know Riley wants to hear what... Uh, she has to, uh, uh, Stephen wants to hear what she has to say, and then Riley just volunteered. She's going to talk a little bit too, right? Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, then we will go and we will sing our hymn. Uh, Please rise <coughs> in body or in spirit as we sing with a story to tell to the nations.
now it is the time when we share the joys, concerns, things that are on our hearts. Um, Barb. Good morning, everyone. Somebody here had a birthday this past week. Who? Oh, my mom. Mm. She turned 89. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Loretta. Happy birthday to you. Else? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> um, PJ's not here today. He's at home. He's not feeling very well. He's been having some major stomach problems, and we're trying to figure out what's going on. So just prayers that he'll feel better. But on a positive note for that kiddo, he got his first job this week. He will be starting in August with Peoria Elementary as an instructional assistant for a highly functioning autistic young man that's a seventh grader. So I'm so proud of him. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. PJ was disappointed. He was one of my speakers today, but he can't speak, so he was disappointed that he couldn't be here. I like prayers for my niece, Melissa, who twisted her knee, and she's got plates and pins and all kinds of good stuff going on there. She can put absolutely no weight on it. She has a 14-month-old son. So I'd also <laughs> like prayers for my sister, Annette, who is caring for her daughter and grandson oh, wow. while her other two grandchildren, ages 4 and 12, are visiting. She's <laughs> oh. got her hands full. Oh, wow. My goodness. Okay. Oh, I have a joy. This past week, I was able to visit my aunt, who's 99 years old, and she remembered me, and uh, we had some good, you know, talks and good times together. Got to see my cousins and a couple of friends. I have a friend that's 93 years old that lives where my parents used to live in Baker Homes, which is a, a place for retired Methodist ministers and their wives or their spouses. And so it was nice to spend time with, with her and some other people that I know, so it was really fun. Okay. Okay. I'm really excited for the spotting classes that I'm gonna be doing for the next two weeks. Again, they paid $750, I've made a commitment for a year to them, but I'm gonna be the actual SPED teacher, so I have to have the spotting reading phonics method, uh, method, and I already have all the other stuff, And they're paying me almost as much as a teacher makes. Thank Ooh, you, God. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, a few weeks ago or so, I asked for prayers for my friend Nadine, who had a stroke and was not able to see. Well, she called me yesterday, and her husband passed away a couple of days ago. So she's, she's really in need of prayers. Just want the rabbit healing for the two ladies in the congregation who have their legs up right now. <laughs> and look like they're they're in trouble. So rapid healing to these two ladies. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's see. Anybody else? Oh, Barbara. Yeah. Um, Paul and I, um, as members of the church. Our, our lay representatives to annual conference and um, annual conference was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We had a pretty good meeting overall and I'm glad that it's done for this year. And next year we're going to Tucson. You guys just wanna make me run back and forth here. Get your steps. Get your steps. Okay, I'm getting my steps in. I had a surprise because when I went to call and switch my attendance from in the house to online, I was informed that this year there's only one delegate of lay people, 
and so I was not allowed to go, so. Oh, no. I, at least I'm getting my money back. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, goodness. That's interesting. Okay. Does anybody have any word on art? I understood last week he was battling uh, shingles, and that is not fun. Nobody hasn't updated him? Okay. Okay, and this time I'll remember that the hymn goes first before the prayer. All power is given in Jesus' name. That is a powerful thing. And let us keep that in mind now as we pray for our needs and the needs of others. Lord, we lift up the names of all those we have mentioned today and also for those we have not mentioned that are on our hearts and minds. We pray for your physical, emotional, and spiritual healing in the ways that you think best. And we pray for your guidance in knowing how to best be your hands, feet, and voice in helping those we love and to all people in need of your help. We were given freely and we freely give. In this time of annual conference, we pray for the future of the United Methodist Church, for our lay leaders, and for this congregation. We pray for Pastor Christine and Pastor Galen, and for all our church leaders, those who were at annual conference and those who were not. Lord, today is Father's Day. We pray especially this day for all fathers and all father figures. We pray for those who have lost fathers and who have difficult relationships with their fathers our difficult memories of their fathers. We pray in all these cases that they would learn by your example how to be a good father. Grant them your eyes of compassion and your heart of empathy that they may have patience and always act in love toward their children. And now let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's proclamation of God's word is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through chapter 10, verse 8, and in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 2 and 17. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for him, for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenty, plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thavidias. Simon the Canaanite and Judas Icarus the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. The word of God for the people of God. The Matthew passage we just read tells about a time when Jesus sent out the big 12 disciples. Uh, and there's a parallel passage in Luke, and it tells us about a time Jesus sent out 72 disciples. Note in both passages the kind of things that he wanted them to do in his name. They were not only to proclaim the kingdom of God in words, but by actions. And those actions had to do with meeting all kinds of human needs. In other words, they were to do the kind of things that Jesus did. Note also in the Luke passage that the disciples returned rejoicing. Responding to God's call had an effect not just on the people they served, but on them. It is amazing what God can do through us when we listen to and respond to his call. And don't be distracted because the text mentions casting out demons. This is not Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> a lot of modern interpreters think that uh, that was just a first century way of talking about brain diseases. A lot of times the symptoms would look like something like epilepsy. So it could be epilepsy, it could be schizophrenia, but they, you know, had just as much of a problem. Those were difficult things to cure. And so that's why they returned rejoicing that, he, that God can do anything. Nothing is impossible for God. As we said in our call to worship, nothing is too wonderful for our God. So last week, I promised you I wouldn't be talking very much, and I won't. But I did say last week God calls all kinds of people 
from the young to the old, all kinds of people, and God calls all people. So today, you won't hear from me much longer. You'll hear it through the testimonies of several people in our congregation who have responded to God's call in different ways. And their names are up on the screen. And the first one is Lily Harris, and I believe her cousin Riley is coming too. So come on up. They are going to talk about the youth mission trip that they just got back from. Here are two young people who responded to God's call and went to do something good. Um, okay, so last Sunday we went on a six-day youth mission trip where in Ventura, California, where we went to a city center and a church and a maternity home for single homeless mothers. And we went to help by repairing their home. Um, and we did all kinds of work. We painted, we redid, oh, sorry. <laughs> we redid um, a bunch of rooms and just et cetera. We did a lot of things. Um, uh, we also got to hear their stories and, like, feel their emotions and, like, yeah, it was just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got to play with their kids. And, yeah. Oh, Hi, um, we, I worked at City Center where there was a bunch of homeless families who weren't just all mothers. There are some fathers there, and what we did to help and work on their home was we had six projectors that slide down, put them to the wall, so we can have, like, where we can put more color and more time to attract them to come in. We fixed the curbs that had been there for a while and were getting, like, worn out, and then we also moved a playground to lay it out where so when they have, like, would switch for them the playground can be set up and at the maternity home some of our friends and our, my cousin and cousin kids work there they had painted the rooms and got everything set up for the babies when they come and they cleaned out the garage so they have more storage to put food cooking food safe and they made the rooms look more put together and make them like look nicer by painting them setting up the babies. Thank you very much, not only for your service for a whole week and doing some pretty hard work, but your willingness to get up and share with us. Amazing. Okay, our next speaker was going to be PJ, but he is ill. And so you never know when God is going to call you, right? So Cindy said, PJ's not here. I'll talk. I have something I'd like to share. So next up is Cindy. Good morning. So as you guys all know, I'm kind of a kid person, right? And I had an opportunity almost 11 years ago to become a mom again. And, excuse me, that was with PJ. And let me tell you, it came with some challenges. And I thought I had kids pretty well figured out until that little boy stepped into my life. And I didn't realize how much trauma he had gone through. So the things that I got to learn were just phenomenal. And it took a long time to learn how to talk to him, how to deal with his anger, and um, how to become more reassuring for him. But God opened that door for a reason, because last year in September, I interviewed for a position at Peoria Elementary, and I was given that position to work with one-on-one -on -one with a little guy that's autistic. Now, DJ is highly functioning, but he reads, or did read, at a second grade level and was doing second grade math, and he was a sixth grader. So I had the opportunity last year to work with him and six other children that were about his same level uh, for various reasons. And at the end of the school year, we were able, I should say, they were able to become 
fourth grade readers. They were able to do almost fifth grade math. They were well on their way. And then I was called into the office. And I don't like to go to the principal's office because usually that means I've done something. And trust me, as a kid, I was there enough. So I walked in and I said, whatever it was, I didn't do it. And they said, oh, but you did. <laughs> and I thought, oh, great, what did I do? And they looked at me and they said, we want you to come back next year and we want you to be in charge of all of our IAs, the instructional assistants, to help the kids with IEPs and 504s and to teach them the things that I got to learn by becoming, another, becoming a mom again for PJ. And that is to deal with their anger and their issues of being scared and not knowing how to do their schoolwork because nobody took the time to show them or nobody took the time to teach them how to set some boundaries for themselves when it comes to video games and things like that. So come August, I will be back at Peoria Elementary with PJ. PJ will be taking over the caseload that I had with my little guy, who will now be a seventh grader. And I think they're gonna be a pretty good match. Um, DJ was nonverbal uh, when I got him, and he now can carry on a conversation with people. He will greet you, he will say goodbye. Um, he can tell you some really good stories, let me tell you. And, but he's pretty obstinate and not wanting to do things which PJ can be, so I think that's gonna be a good learning opportunity for PJ as well, as well as for DJ. So I'm really excited for him to start down this journey because he really does like kids, even though he'll tell you he doesn't. And they all, he's kind of like his grandmother. They all kind of gather towards him. I never really understood why until Lorraine said, you know, I'm gonna ask people to call what God, to talk about what God called them to do. And when I see a kid like my little guy at school be able to come up to a teacher and say, good morning, Mr. Nelson, I really like that haircut, and then just laugh about it because he really didn't like the haircut, but he was communicating, and that was something he couldn't do before we started working together. And one of the things I discovered was he didn't think I was gonna come back because he had had so many people come in and stay one or two days and then not come back, and he didn't know why. So he thought that was his fault. So when I came back on the following Monday, he looked at me and I said, yep, I'm back, aren't you happy? And he says, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm happy that I'm back. I said, because I think you're a pretty cool kid. And we just kind of started to build that relationship. And for the longest time, he would ask me every Friday, he would say, bye, Miss Cindy. I am seeing you on Monday, right? Oh yeah, I'm coming back on Monday. And then when I had to go out for my hand surgery, I had to prop, prepare him like two weeks in advance that I wasn't gonna be there for two weeks. And so the principal called me midway through the recovery of the surgery and said, I have DJ in my office and uh, we can't get him to do anything. Can you talk to him? So I said, buddy, what's going on? And he says, you're not here. And I said, I know, but I have to get my hand better so I can come back. And he says, well, when are you coming back? So I told him when I was coming back and he says, if you don't come back, I'm gonna come find you. <laughs> and I said, okay, I promise I'll be there. So when I walked in that Monday morning um, from surgery and came back to school, he looked at me and he says, good thing you came back, I don't know where you live. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, well, this is true, but I told you I would come back. And he said, everybody just leaves. And I said, well, I'm not gonna leave. So my challenge this year is to get him used to PJ and get him to understand that PJ is not gonna go anywhere and I'm still there, that he can still come find me. And I truly, in my heart, that was one of the happiest days of my life when he said, I'm so glad you're back. I didn't think you were coming back. And he gave me a big old hug. So that filled my heart and that's why I answered God's call to work with kids. We never know how the little things that we do, how they can affect other people. So uh, you, next up, we have <laughs> Cherry Blue, who does far more than just be our sound person. Well, first I wanna make a little confession, and some of you know this about me, but 
I have a morbid fear of public speaking. More on this in a moment. I was raised in the Methodist Church. I grew up there, uh, but when I was a young adult, I drifted away and stopped going for quite a few years. Finally, when my boys were seven and two respectively, something started gnawing at me that I needed to get back to church. Of course, you know what that is, that something. It was Jesus calling. So I started looking through the papers. This was back in the 80s, no Google, and looked at the start times of the various services of the churches around me. And the boys and I, the next Sunday, headed off to Crossroads United Methodist Church. We pulled up, and it was kind of strange. There were cars in the parking lot, but it was really quiet. I walked up to the door, realized I had gotten there about halfway through the service. Well, the kindly usher motioned us in, people looking at us who was coming in late. And uh, that half a service was all it took. I knew I was home. And I kept going back and going back to make, became a member. And before I knew it, I was teaching Sunday school, which was way out of my wheelhouse. I was singing in choir, playing in the handbell choir, helping with the youth handbell choir, doing the bake sale, the annual fair, uh, doing the children's worship service. And then of course, coming here to Spirit of Hope, it's the same thing. Been singing in choir, I've taught Sunday school, uh, goes on and on. Anyway, when, God, or when Jesus calls you, you get to work. There's no question about it. But there's a flip side to this. When he calls you, he also graces you and blesses you in ways that you could never have imagined. You see, at Crossroads, there was a Toastmasters Club. And for seven years, I worked on managing my nerves. And it helped me in my career. My older son was introduced to the Phoenix Boys Choir and later to Desert Bells International. And he traveled all over the country and all over the world. Uh, he, went to the, he was one of the first to go uh, with the Phoenix Boys Choir to Australia and New Zealand. And now he travels internationally with his uh, work. And he's very comfortable doing it. My younger son didn't get quite that same thing, but he, he gained a, a real confidence that, that children get when they grow up in church. So when Jesus calls, answer. We don't have the sound person turning me on here. But Terry, that made me again think about the parable of the mustard seed, how you start out with one decision to follow God's call, that leads to another and another, and it's branching out into all of these other things. How much good comes out of one saying yes, initial saying yes, and how that leads to others? Okay, so, ah, now she's back there and it's working. So, uh, next, I think was Patty. Good morning. Um, I have the same issue Terry did with public speaking. That is not my forte. But God called me up there, and here I am, Lord. So um, I was going to talk about my talents with sewing, and I had it all prepared, what I was going to say, because I make these bags that are reversible and washable, and I was giving them out as gifts. Well, two weeks ago, I was sitting in the chair, and I was looking around this place, and I remembered when several years ago they decided to remodel and they asked for help. And I thought, okay, I can, call, I can answer the call, but I don't know anything about it. So I came and the first time we were here, Mike Iyer is telling me, measure this, where the studs go. I didn't know. And then drilling was not, I wasn't good at drilling either. So then the next time we were cutting out the styrofoam insulation, and they have these tools where you pull it out and the string comes out and there's chalk on it and you measure it and you get your utility knife. And after a couple hours of doing that, I noticed my hands were all red, I touched my face, I had, I had the chalk all over, but it was fun and the fellowship was great. And then when we came in to put the drywall up, you have to get a special tape and tape the seams, then you have to mud you have to mud where the screws are in the drywall and then it dries in the sand and the mud and the sand. And I was a pretty good mudder. I did really well. 
So um, my point was I was sitting there and I'm thinking, I don't have this gift, but I answered God's call and he gave me the opportunity to learn something new. And so when Jesus calls you, it's like with a tech room or a, a day of uh, our Saturday work day, you may not have those gifts, but you may learn something new. And I think when you have that call, it's like I know we all have it where we think about somebody, like, oh, God, I have to call that person, see how they're doing. And that's God calling us to service too. So I think we need to be just to be still and listen to his call. And if he calls you, answer that phone and say, here I am, Lord. What Patty didn't tell you is she was making all of those gift bags for her chemo nurses. No matter what situation you find yourself in, there is a way to answer God's call. Uh, next up, we have uh, Paul Korth, who has been our finance person for many, many years. I don't know if that's going to, but what he's going to talk about or not. I just kind of said to people, you talk about what's on your heart, and, and they have. I like to tell the story of how I got, how we got to uh, Spirit of Hope. We moved here from California. We're one of those people, California to Arizona, not welcome here. <laughs> but we came anyhow. And uh, Rita's idea was to go around, interview pastors to determine what church she wanted to attend. She wasn't going to go to the services. She was going to interview pastors. <clears throat> and she got the spirit of hope. And she sat down and talked with Cliff only to find out that Cliff was affiliated from, with the church in California that we just left. So there was no question where we were going to go at that point. And so <clears throat> that was 2003, and that's how I started my journey with this church. And I wasn't here but nine months when a certain person named Kathy approached me <laughs> and said, uh, we're in need of someone to work on finance. As a, would you join the committee? Well, what I didn't know was when you join the committee, that means there aren't very many people on it, so you usually wind up leading it. <laughs> I found out this is, this is a, one, of, one of the crosses I guess I bear. Um, I have a hard time saying no. And, uh, my commitment to this church is, has really been pretty amazing. It's been a, had a powerful effect on me. It's, uh, as you all know, there are many churches, many options where you can go in this valley. And uh, this church is family. I know so many of you personally for a long time. <clears throat> uh, you've helped make my life doing, doing well. Uh, I keep on as chairman of finance because nobody seems to want it. Uh, but it's, it's a labor of love. It's not a challenge. I'll continue to serve as I can. I, I serve on other committees too, you know, answering God's call on one. Uh, as, a, as your treasurer, you automatically get to be on the, uh, the trustees. I'm also on SPRC because that involves placement in the church and responsibilities. So I will continue to serve as the church has me to. But most of all, this is home. Thank you. Another multi, uh, listening to multiple calls and, uh, and being willing. And I think that's what, what Patty had said too, is you might not think you can. I don't know, did you learn some new skills on that mission trip? Yeah. Uh-huh. You may, you may learn some new things. I thought Paul is pretty good at finances to begin with. And so sometimes God uses a gift that you already have. But sometimes you learn something new. <clears throat> okay, our last speaker 
is Jo Porch, and you all know her as the lady who talks with her hands very eloquently. So, Jo, you are next. This is my church, and like Paul said, it was a gal and her wonderful husband who met me here the first day I came to this wonderful family, and that's Kathy, and her dear husband sat next to me all the time. Every Sunday they greeted me, and I thank you for your love, but I come from a long family ministers, four generations of ministers in my family, four generations of pastors, teachers, evangelists. I knew the books of the Bible before I knew my ABCs. I've been in jail ministry, teaching ministry, missionary ministry. It surrounded my life in the church. But being a child of a preacher is not easy. So you have a tendency to kind of stray a little bit. <laughs> but the scripture tells us if you train up a child in the way it should go, when they get old, they won't depart. And I find myself hmm, coming back, coming back. Even though I had four children to raise, a wonderful job in HR, and a full degree in college, going to college. I mean, being there. There was no online. You had to be there. But as I came back to what I knew was the scripture and God's word and sharing that with others, I said, Lord, what do I do now? Where do you want me? Not another preacher, please. On both sides, my mother and my father's side, way back to my grandparents, were all ministers, all people of the gospel. I knew scripture. What do you want me to do, Lord? So I just sat and waited. And he brought into my life a woman by the name of Joyce Ray. She taught in the public school system, but she taught death in the school system. She was also a minister in the church of First Assembly of God, where I met her. And for five years, going to school, raising four children, going to college, each Tuesday we would meet at the Warren Public Library in a little corner, and she taught me to stop. I said, oh, I know what you want me to do. So I followed her, Joyce, as she taught death. I learned and learned and watched her. I'm going to minister to the dead. No. <laughs> That's a tough job. No. One evening, she had me to sign to the hearing. To the hearing? And so I did. And the audience were, oh! I never saw anything like that before. I was sharing the word of God to the hearing and to the deaf to see in my hands. I was called to the hearing to make them aware of this wonderful, beautiful language of American Sign Language. I thought it was for the deaf only. But when hearing people saw me share with my hands and they heard the words, they said, ah, something inside of them was lit. 
And I come to find out that most of us, even though we're hearing, we're a little spiritually deaf. <laughs> and they saw that in my signing to you, the hearing people. And so that was my mission, to sign for all people. And now I see it everywhere. In fact, there was a young girl who saw me sign. And she came to me, she said, teach me, teach me, I want to learn, teach me. I said, I'm still learning, I can't teach anyone, really, I'm still learning. She said, well, what can I do? I said, go to school. And she did. She is now in Washington, D.C. She's an interpreter for the government. So if my job was only to light fires in hearing people who say, oh, that beautiful language is something for me to share to others. I found out that sign is not only for the deaf. It is for we the hearing as well. So my job was only to light fires. When I signed and you saw me and you were moved by what you saw and now you are aware that there is a community out there that needs the gospel, needs to hear the word of God. Hard for them to understand but signing is good for all people of God. So my job and my mission is to just light the fire in the souls of those that are hearing and deaf as well, that there is a beautiful language that needs the call of God's word. And so here I am, signing, not only for the deaf, but for you and me, the hearing. God bless you. That's great. I mean, I am just blown away by what I've heard today. And then I, I kept hearing things. I heard Kathy Elbram's name mentioned twice. I didn't ask her to speak. I didn't ask John to speak. If I asked everybody to speak, we'd be here all day. That was just a representative sample of the people in this church who have heard the call of God and have said, yes, I'll do it. So... And, they're, and they're, so here's to all the unseen acts of love, the people who didn't speak today that did things and they didn't tell you about, but they'll make the word, world a better place. They will make the world the way God intended it to be. Okay, I believe now is we've shared about our, our uh, gifts of service, and now it is the time for our gifts of money as we uh, collect our offering.
Okay, uh, please refer in your, the green sheet in your bulletin for our announcements. And uh, I want to particularly uh, call note to the information about the potluck next week. Uh, if you have questions about that, Ginger, are you taking questions about uh, what to bring or people ask you or, oh, oh Ginger, Cindy, about the potluck, so you're in charge of the potluck? Yes. Okay, do you, so. wait a minute, let's get the microphone so that people can hear you. Ugh. Okay, so the church is going to provide the hamburgers and I think hot dogs. So what we need you guys to do is to bring a dish to share, a dessert, a salad, um, any type of side dish that you want to bring. Whatever your favorite is, go ahead and bring that. Um, we'll have some special little treats on the tables um, to say farewell to Christine. Um, that everybody can take one and take it with them and it's just a little fun way to say goodbye to her and um, but we'll do that right after church so if you want to bring your stuff ahead of time I'll have everything set up over there and get it all arranged and all that kind of stuff so if you just want to drop it off in fellowship hall don't worry about it I'll take care of it and make sure it all gets put out and spoons and everything and all that stuff is in it thank you okay all right can so I you know? answered another call yeah can you want to talk about Vacation Bible School? Well, why'd you give the microphone back to me? Well, because it just dawned on me. I need to do this. Um, we ran into some problems with the curriculum that I picked. It was last year's Bible School curriculum, and there's some problems with the media piece of it. So I talked to Cokesbury this week, and they were very gracious and said they knew there was a problem. Um, they're sending me the one I originally wanted that they were out of. So we're going to get the original one, which is a food truck party. Um, the music is way better than the one I ended up with. So I think it was God's way of saying, I don't really want you to do that. I want you to do this one. So that one should be here tomorrow. It set me back about a week, but that's okay. All I got to do is plug some things in and we'll be ready to rock and roll. But I just wanted to let everybody know that the theme has changed from superheroes to, um, a food truck party. The kids are going to be learning about the Lord's Prayer, about how to answer God's call. So I think it was meant to be. <laughs> but anyway, um, just so you guys know that that is going to change a little bit, and you're not going to think I'm just a flake, because sometimes I am. But um, so it's going to be at the end of July. It'll be the last week. It'll start on Tuesday and run through Sunday. So that Sunday following the week of time with the kids, you're going to be able to see them tell you about what they learned, they're going to sing for you. They're going to dance for you. They're just going to show you how to have a good time. And I'm hoping with the new pastor's blessing, we can have a picnic afterwards and figure out how to celebrate that food truck VBS. Thank you. Thank you. What is it John Elbram's always surprise, saying, surprise us, God? Was that a surprise? I'm going to get, yeah, were you, did you want to say something too? I want to. Good morning. Uh, we uh, have a Tuesday night Bible study that has completed our regime until uh, fall. But one of the things that we decided amongst ourselves was that we would like to keep that going on Tuesday night as a fellowship gathering in which we will have some uh, reflection that we'll do on, uh, on scriptural things. But we're going to keep that running, and it will be a potluck after a fashion. We're... Uh, we had uh, one our, our startup last week, and we had lasagna, and we had some great vegetables, and and uh, Sue Hunt provided her volume voluminous food basket, which is just unbelievable, and uh, it was a uh, just a great time. And and what we want to do is we want to extend the invitation not just to members of the Bible study, but anyone in the church who would like to regain and deepen the fellowship that has so much. Uh, so much enabled those of us who are in church to continue doing what we do. The fellowship, the love, the caring, the sharing, those things are so great. We just want to keep them going and make sure that the summer doesn't snuff it out. So in Jesus' name, we're asking you to come and join us. Amen. Amen.
now six o'clock, not six thirty. Um, you know, we're getting ready to say goodbye to our pastor, Christine, and um, as a gift, one of the gifts for Pastor Christine is I uh, purchased a Bible. And I'm asking everybody to um, sign the Bible, either by your favorite passage in the Bible, um, on inside of the covers, wherever. Um, also, for those that are online, I did receive a message from Betts um, through the friends and family website of on Facebook. So if that's not if you need to get a hold of me, would like to be included, please, you can send your message through that way and I will get it. Um, so we've got one, this week and then I will have it um, before church next week for anybody that hasn't had a chance to sign it, whatever. Um, so we can get as many people signing it as possible. And, um, you know, <laughs> we'll present it to her at the um, barbecue after church. All right. Thank you, Barbara. Do you want to say something about the ice cream social? No? Um, so, Stephen, Lorelei, Lily, and, and Riley, uh, we just came back for 33 adults and kids from Ventura. We will have our ice cream social, our shareholders meeting, uh, August the 20th at 3 o'clock at Glendale First United Methodist Church. That's about uh, two months away, so. Uh, well, you should put it on your calendar so you don't miss it. Okay, any other announcements? Oh, okay. You want to make me get in more steps. Anyways, we had our last Jazz for the Soul show on last Sunday. We were at Full House, a phenomenal show. Anyways, um, we uh, decided that the money will go to the heart pantry for that the offerings, which is which was a hundred uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars. Oh wow! Um, so I, I, they, a check will be cut this week, sent out to them. So I just want to share that. All right, thank you. Ah, more now. Okay, now I got. Now I have to reach. <laughs> From the heart, heart pantry, thank you. This church has been behind us for at least eight of our ten years. And um, this music program, they came and visited. They took all kinds of pictures at the pantry. And it is just a labor of love. Thank you all so much. Heart, <clears throat> Ruth in Heart Pantry is another person who's listened to God's call and gone forth to meet the need that we didn't even have time to talk about and, and share today. You know, I hope you have, are there any other announcements? I mean, I have been blessed today by hearing stories from these people. I hope you have too. Um, and I know there's so many other stories that if we let everybody talk, we'd be here all day. So as we go, let us go out rejoicing in what God has been able to do in us and through us. And let us continue to pass on the good news of the kingdom of God through our words and our actions. And now in honor of the youth mission trip, our leaving song is going to be Pass It On.
praise God.